Hello, and welcome to the Professional Insight Podcast, Season 5. Um, we've lost Cyber track Monday. of our episodes. Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday. It is Cyber Woo. Monday. My name is Brandon Curry. I'm Jeff Collins. Uh, uh, Bondo today. Bondo. Not Josh Bondo. Bondo. Bondo and Trevor Josh. Lindy. <laughs> Trevor <laughs> Star Wars <laughs> Lindy. What did you... <laughs> Oh yeah, and Schwartz Savvy's be with you. Disney World. <laughs> Inflation, <laughs> my well, ass, right, Trevor's five hundred bucks on Star Wars stuff. <laughs> Once in a while, yeah, somebody just came a month life. before Christmas. Five hundred bucks on Star Wars stuff. That's okay. We established somebody that just, this was an early Christmas present to myself. Hmm. Somebody just came back from uh, Disneyland, Disney World, Disney World. Disney World. Yeah, Disney World. Yes. Yeah, Disney World Florida. for a week. <clears throat> that was nice. Otherwise yeah. known uh, as you Inflation got yourself- Kingdom. That is the most it expensive is. place on earth. You want to you want to talk about a place that has not notwithstanding their their share price, which has plummeted uh, in the last year, but that was mainly due to poor decisions by the replacement CEO. Um, is that the tax liability? No, no, that was that was the uh, he just made some bad decisions internally and, and marketing wise. But anyway, Jar Jar Binks um, he used as his main. Uh, Character. Oh boy. <laughs> but in all in all seriousness, like that is the best place. Like it, they they shake you upside down to get in. They take you for everything you own while you're there. And Trevor's got a couple of uh stories. And then they shake you and turn you upside down on your way out. Like you are literally left with nothing. But Curry, you know, I didn't even think I spent that much until I got back home and got my credit card bills. I was like, what the fuck? Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> It's I'll, the best business I'll tell model. You. It, it was my dad's. Don't worry son. about it. We're on vacation. Don't worry it about it. It was my We're dad's seventieth birthday, so my my mom basically squirreled. Yeah, money tell the away. story. This is good. And she squirreled money away to to be for my seven for my dad's seventieth <clears> and a basically an early Christmas present for the kids. I still ended up spending sixteen hundred bucks U.S. All oh, I had to no. pay for was food. Oh no, sixteen hundred bucks! I was like one fucking theme park. Yeah, but the point I'm making is, all I had to pay for was souvenirs and food. I didn't have to pay for any of my park admissions. I didn't have to pay for no flights, uh, no flights, no hotel. No state. hotel. My parents so, paid oh. all of that. My parents even picked up a meal for and us. And those two, those two per, those two uh, things you got there's half of your spend isn't it well yeah it was 500 bucks for see me. i don't think you would have bought those things if you were footing the whole bill for your family you would have bought I, those. I probably wouldn't have bought both but i got the droid appointment first and then the lightsaber appointment i got a day before so you look like you have less gray hair going to disney with your mom paying for everything than you did when you came uh, like you, you got black hair back i have I'm tons of gray now hair. i got white I, I may have gotten gotten my hair back. But when Curry and I were talking on the phone, I used the analogy when I got back. I'm like, to, to Curry's point, <coughs> Disney, yes, very expensive. Exhausting. One, exhausting, for sure. But one thing I give Disney credit for is they at least wine and dine you before they bend you over. Huh. Went to Universal for one day, and honest to God, there's- No lube. No, exactly. That was my exact comment. Comment. I'm like, there is zero lube that's being provided for me on this fucking. On which one? Universal. Universal. Yeah. Universal is my favorite by far. I I just go back there. That's it. Yeah, but you know, they they give you free lockers, but you know, there's a bunch of rides, there's free lockers, but if you want to put it in a locker that your backpack can fit in, it's two dollars an hour or a maximum of twenty dollars per day. That sounds like a deal there highway robbery the one point i got into an argument with an attendant because she told me that i needed to lock my phone hat and sunglasses the problem is the way you get into your locker is your ticket and i had the digital ticket on my phone so how am i supposed to open my locker if i lock my key in my locker she didn't provide me any feedback on it i found out a couple of hours later that you just have to call an attendant over by the lockers they will give you a business card or like a little, uh, yeah, it's business card. They, they encode mm-hmm. a barcode on it and that will unlock yeah. your locker for you. But yeah. didn't know that for two hours. <laughs> so you, yeah, you, you paid 1600 bucks for the week in Disney and you still bitched about money. 
fucking right. No, is that's there somebody by a racetrack? <laughs> well, no, I think that's yeah, that's by a racetrack. I'm, I keep getting yeah, muted. Yeah, are you getting worked on in your house right now? Yeah, I am. I'm. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just sound like a snow. Nothing I do that's not spending money, so basement's getting work done. Now I kind of wish that I had my dad's lightsaber too, because then I could turn two on. Okay, we gotta turn the trouble and got. We gotta turn geek mode off for a bit here and get into business. Sure, let's talk business. Let's talk Leafs. For low, we are talking business. Look how expensive Universal is. Abby's workshop, Hollywood Studios. You can get yourself your very own. Did you get anything at Harry Potter World? That's the good stuff. No, sixty-three bucks for a wand. Katie was going to buy one and she's like, no, can't justify spending $63 on a Harry Potter wand. That's like three days of a locker. Two. It's not bad. Two what? Two wands we got. You got two wands, of course. Two girls. Yeah. One for each. I didn't yeah, want to buy any. Kids had, but I went with my kids John, had already gotten who all you kinds guys of crap. know. Yeah. And yeah. his wife, Shelby, had to have a wand. Huh? So I got a wand. I can't let her. I got a wand. Have a I wand got a lightsaber, and I got a wand. Good kids, not a wand. <laughs> See, but Bondo, you have that wand thing in that one bedroom where the Mac is. Yes. And, you know where it's got like five or six wands on it. They yes. were selling that at Universal for three hundred US, I think. <coughs> what to get three wands at once? No, 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 no. Like it was, it. it was a rack with like six wands or five wands in it. It's a nice little little display wall piece and everything, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was two ninety nine. Might have even been three ninety nine US. I mean, I thought those were the two coolest things in Florida: those the Star Wars world when you're walking around and the Harry Potter world. Yeah, it's like you're there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you got to get a picture with the Millennium Falcon or Gringotts outside <laughs> of Gringotts there, or get a butter beer. Oh, that was delicious. And that but was like 10 bucks. <laughs> it was $8.50. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Crazy. John Shelby? Yeah. Not one. Yeah. See? Ooh. Butter beer. Enjoying. <laughs> because I guess there's a frozen butter beer too? Or? Yeah. yeah and, and that's, that's what good. I got was the frozen butter beer. <laughs> so she wanted to try them both, right? And then my kids are looking. <laughs> yeah. No, you get one. That's it. <laughs> That's hilarious. See You'll you be doing that time. soon enough, Curry. Um, millennium. Yeah, when your kids get a little older, you got to nice. go. There we go. Nice. Yeah, we, we probably won't do Universal Studios, though. because Oh, my God. If I go back, that... I do Universal, Universal Volcano <sighs> Bay. I wouldn't even go to Magic Kingdom. I go to Disney Hollywood, but. Hollywood they're more, in the, Magic they're more into the Magic Kingdom kind of stuff. As yeah, at that age. But when they're, when they're like 10, 13, you're not going to want to go there yeah. anymore. Hulk's yeah, one of the best roller coasters ever. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that's the, the number one pass out roller coaster in all of Florida is the Hulk. Is it is really? really? Yeah, if you read about it. I thought the Velociraptor would be, be more crazy because I yeah. did both of them. But the Hulk is the number one pass out one. Really? Yeah, if there's you read a zero about gravity it. turn in it, right? There's zero on gravity what, the off Hulk? the beginning. Yeah. The Velociraptor, you're upside down going this way, and then you stop going the other way, and you're upside down the whole way. I came loose in my chair, and I'm a big guy compared to the other people we're going with. I was like, holy. Fuck. Yeah, see that Veloci coaster. I didn't. We didn't end up going on it. It was too long of a lineup. And uh, what was it? My brother-in-law ended up going on it, and he said it was about five, six seconds of like pure weightlessness. Oh yeah. When they do that transition from one way to the other, like you're just oh yeah, like, you're floating midair. And my nephew was on it, nearly shit a brick. Yeah. <laughs> so uncomfortable but my the, buddy went on and we're both 46 and he came off and he's like i gotta sit down i'm freaked out right now like he he had to sit down <laughs> yeah to take a break and all that he's like i'm i'm all messed up he had vertigo and, going on oh, and how geez. did he feel about uh about the incredible hulk coaster not not as bad he didn't think oh, it was really, as bad. Eh? he thought the, the velociraptor one was the craziest one but it's just it's funny that you say that the the incredible hulk is is one of the worst ones like for that we got the best picture of Colby. He's, he's 10, my son, my young guy. And we went on the Aerosmith, the rock and roll one, which is a, an upside down one. His face and the camera, because we bought all the camera ones too, we're making a t-shirt for the family because his face is like that. Like it just Scared complete shit. terror, right? <laughs> yeah. oh, he, he didn't know it was going upside down and we just said nothing to him. And it's the best face. It, it was worth the 10 grand for the trip. American that we spent for that one week in Disney. Yeah. God. Oh my God. We spent two um, grand at Universal. 
Yeah. Two yeah. G's yeah. at Universal now. Yeah. So we did two Universal ones. It was two G's each day. And oh the Volcano God. Bay one, too. American. Uh, you got to get the fast said, pass, man. Because you're not going to work. You're not going to be waiting two hours for one. Well, ride. we went with another so family. You, but and, here's, and here's where it, I get. So like, here's where I run, run the question is like, if, but if everybody gets a fast pass, it's not long. It's no fast. It's not faster anymore. No, because like you're it's getting, it's, assholes it's, going by you and you're like, you motherfuckers. You're like, you're watching them and, and like, you hate them and all that. And they just walk up the line. That's brutal. 20%. 20% will get the fast pass, not more than that. Yeah. That's it, eh? It's expensive, yeah. man. It's expensive, dude. It's like double the is park. It? Okay, I don't know. What it? Okay. What is it at Universal? Wow. <clears throat> Universal is the most expensive park there. Yeah, yeah, no, but like, what, I, what was I, the cost to upgrade? Well, I think Universal they have different pass kinds. They have like a Genie like, Pass where you get three rides. There's a that. Lightning Lane where you get everything. I think it's like 160 What did we pay for American our tickets each. for Universal? For the fast pass. I love that you're hollering at Annalisa right now. For fast pass. So that they don't have the fast pass anymore. Yeah, they have like a lightning lane and a genie. It's, it's called the genie. Like it's called the genie plus pass now. Okay. And it varies from fifteen dollars per day per person to twenty two dollars per day per person. So when I went, uh, we for Hollywood Studios because I wanted to. I wanted us to be able to do all the Star Wars stuff. Plus, I had the droid and the lightsaber booking. It was 22 bucks per per, so it came to 93 with tax. That was on top of the per day. whatever. No, ours per was day. like 300 or 200 and something bucks per person. Yeah, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, so it's different now. When I, so it was still, I think, 110 a day for the regular ticket mm -hmm. plus the genie yes. plus was 22 per person per day. Yeah, it's 110 bucks for the pass, and then it's like. Two hundred and thirty bucks for the fast pass. Yeah, no, it wasn't that much. But does that? But here's. But yeah, but Bondo, does that fast pass work for all parks? No. Yes, except for, for cer certain rides. No, you you, you got it for the one pass one for the day. one park. And, yeah. and, and one park one day. And with Universal, I think we got two parks. That's why it was so expensive because we did the Harry Potter, and it goes into two different parks, right? So, yeah, one's a Minion yeah. Minion World and all that shit too. Yeah, but then you got to yeah. take Hogwarts if you want to take Hogwarts Express. Yeah, that goes to the other park, and in order to enjoy that ride, you got to get. But anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, that is and, capitalism and, at its best. The funny, and then you buy a wand for sixty five bucks, right? Like you know what I mean. And then the you, funny you, thing you, is, you get a butter beer for fifteen, and then you get a, a chicken <laughs> finger and fry for twenty five. So you're okay. That two, <laughs> uh, the two park pass for Universal starts at one hundred and seventy for an adult. But the day yeah. that we went, if we wanted the two park pass, it was I think two thirty. Per adult, you probably then, had different pricing than when I went too, because it's a little colder at the time you went. I think we went; yeah, everything but, was so crazy pricey. But you know, the problem when I went though is the cost was up because I was there the week of American Thanksgiving. Ah, uh, right. So when you looked at my hotel bill, the hotel price I was there from Wednesday the sixteenth to Wednesday the twenty third, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It was lower, and then as soon as the weekend hit. The price went up, and then by the time we were Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, our last three nights there was even higher than the weekend pricing was on it. Because you're so, heading into Thanksgiving. Premium well, Thanksgiving week. was last Thursday, right? American yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. So Americans just love their thing. It's like a week long celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. They do do it's it crazy. right. I have to. Oh, go. they do. They, they do do they, it right. Canada should totally switch to Thursday for Thanksgiving yeah. and take the four days. Well, it's the best. We're, we should be more thankful too, really. Well, if I had a four day weekend, I'd be super thankful. Yeah, but I mean, I'm Canadian. I'm a hell of a lot more thankful than being an American. Yeah, but but let's be honest here. Canada's starting to celebrate American Thanksgiving too, because they're like, why not? I got why an American not? friend. It's a holiday. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to Philadelphia for American Thanksgiving. They do it right. I watched football Thursday afternoon. Yep. That's great. Thursday, and then hockey Friday afternoon. Hockey and then, Friday, yep. Then we're going to go Saturday. to a four day week. You watch. Well, this is what they need to do in Ontario. Do Thanksgiving four-day weekend like that, and then they need to do the Super Bowl on Family Day. You know, so move Family Day to that week where mm. Super Bowl Sunday, and make that Family Day on a Monday, and just make that a three-day weekend. Sure. Why not? 
But why, the, why make it difficult? Yeah, they're going to be hanging out with the family. They're all going to be watching football. <laughs> no, well, on Monday, they're all going to be hung over from party and Sunday. But now nobody can party Sunday. <laughs> like, whenever you do a, a party <laughs> for Super Bowl, it's halftime. Everyone's got to go home because it's school the next day. Yeah. Now, yeah. And it. you notice that, too. You, you start seeing the businesses, eh? They, you see the business, oh, well, we're going to have our staff party on the Wednesday. Well, the think about it now, too, though. staff party on a Wednesday. Black Friday is bigger now than Boxing Day in Canada, I think. Oh, it is. Yes, that that mm-hmm. that that was uh, that surpassed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to say five years ago. Yeah, I, I'm pretty Day sure. Dead. Future Shop was still open in Canada when the shift went from from Boxing Day to Black Friday. Yeah, and well, how they, how they started that, working right? that. <clears throat> they started working that because that's when I worked there, and that was yes. like seven years ago. Yeah, that's the yeah, point. Yeah, so I then think, that's right? that's. Yeah, it all happened. It, 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 we got Black Friday because of the pandemic because our money went higher than the US, if we all recall. And then the first Black Friday that that had happened, we all, all the Canadians went, Whoa, 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 wait a second here. Well, why don't we have like deals, right? Like, why am I? Well, it made more like, sense because we... this is when you're buying for Christmas, right? That's Boxing right. Boxing Day, absolutely. You're spent pain in the ass. Every they tried to promote Boxing Day was. You bought everybody else something for Christmas. Now it's time to buy for yourself. It's like the selfish day, right. right? It's like here. Now you didn't get what you wanted. Now go spend it. Well, you're, you're, well I'm tapped. I got no money left. <laughs> I spent on Christmas. I spent six grand on Christmas. I got no money left. Yeah. So then it then it. And Lisa was and then sooner or later with it. Hmm? Go. No, go ahead, Gary. I was just gonna say, within four or five years, it it, it surpassed Boxing Day. Yeah. And Anna Lisa was sense. out. And Lisa yeah. was out shopping on Friday. Go figure. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> she clearly doesn't watch the show <laughs> if you're commenting like that. She's in the bottom. She's just in the other room right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, she said that most people were not buying for them when she had inquired this yeah. Black Friday. They were buying yeah. for gifts. Yeah. And which oh, is and now, all the wives are in shift. Christmas shopping mode right now, full time. Yeah. yeah, we're all done, done and right? dusted. That's that's the big. You're shit. done that's shopping already about Black Friday. See, if I stop early, I spend way more on the gifts wait. that you're buying for other people. Right? What happens on Boxing Day? You're spending your Christmas money. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, right. That's I would it. rather we, save <laughs> money and buy the gifts for other people at a cheaper cost yes. than Correct. spend Christmas money the day after. I already got a tree full well, of not only from that, wife and kids and and parents and Lindy, what don't. We don't worry. We all remember going to the bloody in Niagara, going to the Penn Center, dreading going to the Penn Center on Boxing Day to do exchanges. Oh, future crap. shop, buddy. Future it was shop. jammed, absolutely jammed. You had your shoulder to shoulder, yep. and like you're, you're you're scrounging through mounds of clothes. Like it was just, it was hell. Like I mean, I did it for yeah the first ten years of being you know a kid and See, having my own money, but then I stopped after that. Lindy did a couple. I think you did what one Boxing Day at Future Shop with me. Yeah, I was looking. The, the, I wanted to buy a new TV, <laughs> and obviously the, this business, the time of year, it's slower. And Katie said, "Well, hey, why don't you ask Collins about getting a gig at uh, at Future Shop for the holidays, and then you offset your cost." And you were a computer guy too, weren't you? When you were in it, yeah, I, right? I was in the computer area, but yeah, I was able to buy a TV at, at you know employee nice. pricing discount. That's awesome. That's a great Earth. idea. Yeah. No, it, it takes a year off your life working retail uh, Boxing Day. It certainly oh, 100% did. It, does. <laughs> it certainly did. It wasn't I had to be there. there. You had to be um, there for 6 a.m. and you had to do a mandatory 12 hour shift minimum. And they paid you a thousand bucks just for showing up that day. That's how crazy it was. So for wow. me, when I was younger, wow. I was like, oh, this is killer. I'm making three grand for the day. But it's hell. It was hell. Like you're, 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 you're well, done. Let you know, like I, I think if I if I were to go back and think specifically about what it was, I can definitely tell you, Boxing Day alone, I made close to a thousand dollars as just a part timer. Crazy! Oh yeah, crazy! Easy. Yeah, crazy. Um, so uh, shout out to Scarphone. Shout out to Scarphone. It was at Showtime on Friday. It was a, it was a great oh, yeah? show. He, yeah, he's got great Chris, show. He's got a Christmas scarf show coming up December seventeenth. Big shout out to. Matt Scarfoni owns Showtime Comedy in uh, St. Catharines. He's part owner yeah. of it. But he's doing his third annual Scarf Christmas. If you want to laugh your yeah. ass off, go watch his show. He's really funny. Yeah. Like, he puts on a good show. 
And it gives you a good deal at Brick for whatever you need to buy too. But he's doing it December 17th. We're looking to go. You guys yeah. want to go with the well, wives for a good night? It's 400, it's 200 it. bucks for a table of eight for the night. Send a, send an email, Jeff, because we might take you up. It was a great it, – listen, it was a – look, a couple He's of Saturday hours. Saturday Night Live funny. He is funny. He wasn't even on. Oh, you didn't see him. So you saw other comedians? Uh, other comedians. I saw Scarfone <laughs> at the Wise Guys, but he had three other comedians. And I'm, I'm – listen, I'm telling you, it's a funny show. Oh, yeah. It's funny. You, if you want to laugh your it ass up, it's a, a good funny show. show. I didn't really <clears> – <throat> I didn't give it the I didn't give it the, the credit it deserved before because I'd seen it yeah. a few years back and I, I it was it was lackluster okay uh, but oh, he's listen, got it, it run in the right show. way I they're, laughed they're, they've had Saturday Night Live alumni on in there too now they bring in like big people from from shows and all that that come on stage yeah. there too it's pretty neat yeah there was a guy from the stage there of uh, December. December 17th, he's got it. 200 bucks for a table of eight or 30 bucks a person. I can tell you what. We went last year. It was a good time. Be a good podcast, no doubt. Get ripped. Let the women drive home. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the beauty. My wife doesn't yeah. drink at all. So I, I got like a perfect PD all the time. <laughs> I love it. Um, so we want to. Let's talk business. Talk about some topics. Yeah, let's talk business. We got uh, all the basic stuff out of like so. Just so for our listeners and stuff, we are going to go back to Fridays uh, recording as opposed to Mondays. Yes. Um, just one. We have a lot more people that tune in and, and interact with us on a Friday. That's just. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Two. Uh, we have a lot of flexibility, like us as professionals on a Friday. You know what I mean? Like versus. Um, any other day. Um, and then, yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing. Um, I got a email. I got an email from Sarah Ives. Hey, Oh, oh nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, I'm trying to organize a time with her, hopefully in December. And You'll remember also, Sarah uh, Ives from the, uh, the, uh, pandemic, pandemic Netflix. Uh, yeah. Is Netflix. she still yeah, in the yeah, same yeah, company? Yeah. She was changing. She uh, no, companies. there's a whole story. I'll get it. We'll get into it when we have her on. Um, okay. you know, yeah. So, and, um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to get some, probably some people on from our, uh, our, uh, fun, our uh, companies. I, like, uh, I just read a university in the state somewhere came up with a, a flu vaccine. Like she, that's what I sent her. On. Yeah. So what'd no, you I say? Sent her. Yeah, and Are they trying to rip her off? Well, we, no, I don't know. I'll, I'll get fry yays when professionally. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. <Kristen. laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what the hell is Mama Curry? Curry no, there. our our wives are listening. Yeah, this is good. at least one is. This is good. Yours is. At least so one is. she on board for being. Is she ready to be a DD December seventh? <laughs> like at least use. The I don't know, Kristen. Marriage. You wanna oh, you wanna like chime in some... on that? What are we doing on Saturday, December seventeenth? You can Uber. Don't say I don't support you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's be honest. She, she's she's not here to support you. She's supporting the other three, right? Mm. See, Jill yeah, watches yeah. after though, after the recording, so she doesn't want to chime in and bitch at me if I'm saying anything bad. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, coming coming down the pipeline there, Kristen. It's uh, December seventeenth. It's a Saturday. I don't know. She she, she she doesn't. She does the schedule. I don't do the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> I get like that too. What are we doing this week? I don't like. What are we doing? Like, I literally just. What are we doing? So I find um, out the day or two before, right? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. So whatever. Wow. Um, what was I going to say? The Sarah uh, Ives. You were talking Sarah Ives. Yeah. Coming, coming yeah. Back Sarah, on the... Yeah. Th- which is going to be amazing. Which is going to be really good. Um, so so we'll get her on, is... on the mRNA. So Philadelphia stealing yeah. it or whatever the university. Um, I don't know. We'll find out. I didn't get any much detail. I just said we'd love your opinion on this. So come on the podcast. It should be great. She's uh, so rookie. I know you're in the background there, but she's from the uh, Netflix uh, special pandemic that was you know not not plandemic not the one on youtube pandemic the legit documentary uh and she's one of the stars and we've had her on before and she's absolutely amazing she's one of our so, stars so of the podcast she's yeah she's she's wicked smart smrt <laughs> um but uh yeah so there's that you and then say it like she's from boston dope. she's not from boston he did goodwill uh, yeah he's no. doing a goodwill hunting uh, yeah, no, I'm not yeah, doing a goodwill hunting 
Come on, Kurt. Yeah. You know, Blindy, get off this Star Wars uh, track here. This is good movies. She's from Boston. Wicked we Smack. Go. Harvard. She's going Wicked to Harvard. Here we are. <laughs> so I got, I got, I got a little. You know, Trevor knows this. I called him up the other day, and he, he, you know, this will kind of potentially get you guys going too. But I got to be very careful on. I'll keep it very general, but it's a, it's a mutual client of Trevor's and I. Or I tried. I tried to make it a, another mutual client again to Trevor, but she already had. Uh, our client already had a an existing relationship with a mortgage broker. Cool, you know. And Trevor, he understands. Boo. Well, there's. Listen, at the end of the day, we we don't. There's no monetary gain for either of us. That's not how we do business. We just refer, and I try to refer. And if they already have someone, great. So, doing a portfolio review with the client, um, and we've done a full blown financial plan. And so, uh, we go up and she's already nervous to begin with. She's retired. Um, you know, the markets are pretty volatile. She's a widow. Um, and, uh, but she's done things right, you know, and she, and she has pretty much her home is almost almost paid off fully, which is, and, um, so what ended up happening was I go up there, we do the review. She's very pleased that she's not down that much because she's obviously ultra conservative. Okay. And um, I was going to say, if she's not down yeah. that much, what the hell did you have with her? Yeah, well, she's pretty. Yeah, she's in pretty yeah. conservative portfolio, so it, it it did what it was supposed to do. How about that? Yeah. Was she yeah. cash? And um, <laughs> so no, so we <laughs> turn around and um, we start reviewing everything, and so she's very happy. And she's like, "Listen, my daughter wants me to uh, co-sign on a mortgage," and I said, "Well, what I would do is." Um, you, I would do a bear trust agreement, Bondo, and I said, as long as you're not putting any money down for her and you're just helping her get the mortgage, then that's what I would do. So she wrote down bear trust, and she was going to talk to her lawyer about that. And then I said, uh, you know, who are you working with? And she's like, uh, my daughter already has a mortgage broker. So, she long said, what realtor? Short, right away, right? What right away? What realtor? What lawyer? And yeah, what lawyer? lawyer? Yeah, where's the law? <laughs> yeah, I did, I did, I did. I did. Right? Her daughter her already had Trevor, everything. Eh? Unbelievable. Yeah, her daughter already yeah. had everything. So I'm like, okay, that's good. So long story short, are key. well, it is. But here's this is no, this is one of the reasons why I kind of keep my my referral circle very tight. Um, so turns out I know the mobile mortgage broker. Uh, or mortgage specialist at one of the big banks. That's all I'll say. And uh, he played hockey with me in in uh, when we were in high school. And uh, so he was, oh yeah, yeah, I know Brandon. He's like da 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 da. And then she, he goes, I need to see that your investments. So she does very well. And to put it into perspective, um, I said we could t- take all the money that you have in cash. Keep your withdrawals the exact same, not indexed, and you'll have enough money for the next 17 years. So 82. Not mm-hmm. to mention her CPP and OAS are both indexed, and she's sitting on a very valuable Bench. home in Burlington. Mm-hmm. So she's got a lot of different levers to pull. She's like, great. So I said, email me, carbon copy him. I'll send you the portfolio summary, and that's all I sent him. He's in Mexico. He calls her up. And while he's in Mexico with the family and uh, he goes, uh, so-and-so listen, uh, I, I did a quick snapshot of your um, portfolio and you're going to run out of money in five years. <laughs> and I'm like, so she calls me panicking because she didn't sleep the night before. <laughs> and she's like, this is what he said. I said, where did he get that information from? I didn't share the financial plan. It didn't say the drawdown. It didn't do anything with her, with him. I get, he needed a snapshot. Trev, you can chime in here in order to get the uh, to to get her approved to to sign off. So I call up my business partner who did the the financial plan with me and um he's he's now mad. We double checked all of our numbers and he's she still has money for the next 15 to 20 years no problem if it's invested in the markets. Mm-hmm. So I call her back and I said, "Hey, here's the situation. You're fine." you know, he's going to call you. I'm like, have him call me. Bet she doesn't have the balls to call me because he's dead wrong. He has not reviewed any financial information. He doesn't know what you're taking in his income. He doesn't know what your risk tolerance is. Nothing. So she's like, okay, that's what I thought. Thank you for giving me a call back. 
So I had to talk her down off a ledge again, which is fine. That's part. She's a sweetheart. I absolutely adore her as a client. And um, so my my business partner calls me back and he goes, I bet you any money he's looking to sell her a reverse mortgage. <laughs> right? So strike fear into the client that yeah. they're going to actually run out of money within the next five to seven years, which was totally false. They see an asset, which today, you know, in Burlington, for those that aren't, aren't aware, it's, you know, just inside the GTHA conservatively, she's sitting on a 650, $700,000 equity in her home right now. So right, right then and there, and Trev, you can chime in. Um, and this is kind of a warning to our listeners and our clients. This is why you really need to vet and do your due diligence on the people that you deal with. Because Trav, if you can comment, um, don't worry. They're I'm really looking. For that moment. Yeah, and they're they're looking at different ways um, to, to 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 make money. And a reverse mortgage is basically taking sixty percent loan to value of the fair market value of the home, and you get that in as as access to a home equity line of credit. The bank then becomes the first or the second, depending on who has the mortgage, on the property. Um, and I called her back. And I said, listen, be on the lookout that he might be looking to do this. He's trying to plant the seeds. And she said, you know what? I thought something was off. So she's like, all right, thank you very much for the phone call. But Trev, I called you. Uh, I forgot you were in Disney. Again, I apologize, but I was oh, good. I was heated. I was I was fuming. Was this um, when he was doing his lightsaber? Or? No. Uh, he, oh, no. He, he, like, he, he wouldn't have answered. He wouldn't have answered. He wouldn't have answered. answered. Yeah. He would not have answered. <laughs> Um, so Trev, take it from here. Yeah. I called so, you, we connected. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those, we, we were having that conversation and the scary part is <clears throat> back in the, the best, my contacts and, 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 and what I take from that is at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020, a lot of lenders and, and, um, stakeholders and everything in this business basically said, Listen, be the voice of reason to your clients. Don't try and sell them. And when all the dust settles, it will pay you back tenfold. Customers will appreciate your advice. They will respect you more for it. And they will know that you're looking out for your best interest. And one of the things that I said to Curry is fast forward now to this conversation. And we have weekly calls at the brokerage. And I know it's not just my brokerage that's doing this. Um, we've had lenders on our weekly calls. And everybody right now is talking about mining your database, looking for those opportunities because the business has slowed down. And that's very much what I feel that this mortgage professional was doing is they, again, total speculation. So I've got to be transparent about that. But just the story and the way that Curry is telling me everything that's going on and the interaction with the client and the mortgage professional is very much tied to looking for that opportunity to cross sell and get, you know, if you've got a qualified borrower in front of you, can I get more out of that person or do I try and go after business elsewhere? And I very much the writing on the wall to me again, speculatively, is that they were just looking out for their pocketbook. It was an opportunity for them to get, you know, another few hundred thousand dollars of volume on the books. And for me in this business right now, that's what I'm struggling most with is how did we go from 2020 being the voice of reason and understanding for our clients and talking them through scenarios and, and, reassuring them that everything is going to be okay to now the focus being mining your database to get more business out of every single person that you've already dealt with in the past. And that is my mind taking advantage. You're looking People are selfish. Way. People it's, are selfish, Jeff. Yeah. Right? But do you and, think and, this is bank directed? It's gotta be bank directed, right? But it's not though, because we're even at our brokerage having these conversations. We have lenders that aren't at banks, monoline lenders that are coming onto our calls that are talking about and encouraging us to do database mining. But a true character of an individual is, is shown in hard times, not in good times. Correct. That's true. Right? So, correct. And this, 
regardless of how anybody looks at how things are right now, I very much see this as hard times, just like they were in the beginning of the pandemic. Different things were happening. Yep. Right. Like, we, you know, we, we didn't have inflation running wild like 2008 right now. right now, kind of. Right. That's the no, no, no not quite, no. not quite, not, not even, even. I wouldn't no. say even close to 2000. Not even close. Well, but but in Canada we plateaued in 2008. We're down now. No, it's this is more of this is more of the dot com bubble 99 2000 versus a credit crisis. In 2008 and 2009, bad you had debt. basically the the bad debt. You had the reliability of the banks. You had banks failing. You had mm -hmm. you know insurance companies failing, which is massive. Massive Fortune 500 companies, General Motors, Chrysler, needing bailouts. Otherwise, but, they were going to. But you, you know, don't think we go got under. the old keys getting handed back in coming real soon? No. No, uh, I know. I know. A, 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 I know of a couple places right now where I've talked to people. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And we got to talk about the trigger rate, right, Trevor? A trigger the trigger rate rate's is, huge. It's going to kill it, people. It's insane, right? And, and that's. I mean, if it, if we don't get to it on this podcast, I mean, it, we got to get to those variable rates that yeah. have a trigger rate on them, and uh, so. Yeah. The impact that that's going to have, quick but not not near. Just so, just to clarify for the audience, not near two thousand eight, two thousand nine. No, no. and the recovery from this in my. Now, are you talking about in Canada or United States? Two thousand eight, two thousand because the states bullied. was brutal, and Canada was bad. Now the reason the reason two thousand eight, two thousand nine is being compared today to that to that time is strictly based on the drop in housing values. Yeah, that's right. That's sure. where it's cut. That that's how well, we didn't default. experience it's, that in Canada correct. because we didn't have the amortizations. See, but we didn't drop in 2008. We plateaued and we dropped now in 2022. Significantly we also from January, had, February. Between 2020 and 2022, yeah, monster house rises climbed yeah. by 50, like they doubled. But if we're talking from January, February to how much they've dropped now. You're talking last year from now, the same time of year. We're down from that last year. Small, small, marginally, small, right? Last Just, year, but from January, February, huge. Because huge. we peaked. Like next month in January, well, not next month because December's not here yet. But come January, if we're doing the analytics in January, year over year, we're down huge for January and February. See, I, I think the problem coming up is we haven't seen it yet. The amount of breaches, and, and we're dealing with one right now, Bond, with one of our mutual clients. Mm -hmm. There's a breach in there where we're going to have to go after for damages. We might not get anything from it, which is a brutal situation. Our brokerage knows of 20 of those things going on right now. I know of a couple scenarios, mutually with you, Bond, too, where clients have mm -hmm. to give their keys back. And they're like, well, they took on a second B loan or B, from a B lender in order to keep the mortgage going. Now they're separating. They've got to sell. The house is not worth nowhere near what they owe on the house. They can't get a realtor to help them now because they're not going to have any money left to pay. So what do you do with the keys? Boom. Bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right? no, somebody's think, not going to go. Nobody's going to go bank. If you're sitting on equity, right? No, and, and but there's no equity. There's no equity. Be, there's no equity. What if there's no equity? That's when bankruptcy then you're comes. Screwed. Then you have to hand in the keys. But this is a call that I took last week that's happening. And they're interviewing three but realtors. And all three realtors said, Don't confuse there's bankruptcy no money in that house. The house you don't but, but what I'm saying is well, the house value is less in, than what they owe on it. There's no room left for commission or anything like that to pay out. No closing cost money left. What do they do? This is not like a one-off. Yeah. Yep. It depends on no, when somebody no, acquired no, it the real estate Jeff, as well and the loan. Let's say one year ago. They're essentially and, Jeff's comments that they're 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 happening a lot more often than they were before. I think they're about to start happening. Is my comments? No, because I don't disagree with you, but I don't disagree with your comment. It definitely, if you are looking at let's say a three-year rolling average pre-COVID on default rates, which in Canada was less than 1% nationally. And that was even in 2008 and 2009. Um, do I think, are they going to trend higher than a, than, a, than a rolling average? Yes, you are correct. You are going to see people have to sell because they can't afford it. I totally agree with you there. 
why people are more comparing it to 99 and 2000, which is the dot com bubble, is basically what's happening with the stock market. So the dot com crash, right? Uh, all the tech stocks. 99, 2000, right? the te- all the tech stocks. That's your crypto equivalent that's happening right now. And then the contagion spread in uh, 99 and 2000 um, uh, throughout other stocks in, in the market. And that also caused a um, a bear market, right? A systemic um, bear market for about three years. The stock market just kept on kept on going down. So versus 08, 09, you had a credit crisis. So you had another recession, which was which was part of the cyclical um, uh, bear, a uh, bull, and then then a cyclical bear. But that it was just like the perfect storm. Everything came in. All all your um, subprime mortgages came due. Whereas those subprime mortgages are not. Um, well, how can I put this? They're they're not as exposed as they once were in 08, 09. So that's why I don't feel that in the U.S. you're going to have um, you're you're going to have that systemic problem. On top of that, if you look at the debt load uh, for the average American versus the average Canadian, they have less debt than the Canadians. Americans yeah. have less debt than Canadians after 08, 09. Americans paid down their debt. Canadians took on more. Uh, and that's that a, a also lot of that has to do has... with Canada and the UK. The values went up, right? Our real estate market never. The... Correct. That's, that's right. Our values went up. And whereas, whereas you never got parity, if you bought in, for example, in Arizona or in Florida, which were the two major markets that a lot of Canadians bought in during that, right? During that crash. I'd rather um, not talk about hit... it. <laughs> yeah, you never hit you never hit parity until like 2013, 2014 if you bought 08, 09. We got the deal, but those values never resurfaced. The yep. stock market never resurfaced until uh 2011, 2012, a, thir- a, a full like 3 or 4 <clears throat> years later. Whereas that didn't really happen this time around. It's still down, but it's already yeah, but, starting but, to recover. But when when they make these interest rate changes, they say it usually takes about 6 months before you see the results of the change, right? We're well, starting to see bare, bare minimum is two to three quarters. Quarters. Typically. Yeah, so, so you have six so to nine months. Six right. to nine, bare minimum. Minimum. Realistically. Minimum. So we haven't seen the pain from the initial ones yet. And they say there's more pain actually, in interest 18, rates coming. It's actually 18 to 24. It's six to eight quarters. Six yeah, to eight monetary quarters, policy is 18 to 24. Fiscal yeah. policy yes, is Jeff. 12 to 18. Yep. Yes, Jeff, we're going to see more of it. Yeah. Yes, well, but nowhere near 0809. I don't disagree yeah. with you. We, I, 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 you, you're correct. You are definitely going to see an uptake on defaults. You are a hundred percent. Just don't like the comparison to 0809. No, I, because that. See, is I don't think 0809 was bad in Canada. I think we plateaued. It wasn't. Yeah. It was because of our because of our default insurance that we have. Right. This one might be. That's this one might be worse. That's what I'm saying. So you're saying it's not but, as bad, but we're saying it might be worse. So it's, see, it's I don't, different. I, I don't, think that we're going it's to different see what I think is going to happen is I don't think we're going to see <coughs> real estate defaults. I think if anything, the defaults are going to come from the unsecured debt. That's where I think That's our right. defaults are going to lie. And it's kind of like, if you look back to April, 2020, Evan Seidel, who was the CEO of uh, CMHC at the time, and, and it was all over the media, nine to 18% housing price decrease that was what they were their modeling was telling them the beginning of the pandemic we commented on it in here yeah we laughed about it we laughed about it fast forward to april 2021 so a year later evan seidel is speaking amongst colleagues and and amongst stakeholders and and mortgage professionals and he openly admitted that he made that they made a mistake the reason being is because they didn't realize how much or or excuse me who would have been impacted most by covid and the people impacted most by covid were students and Trailing single tourism. income households those were the most dramatically impacted by that fast forward to what's happening right now 
that's my logic and my my reasoning as to why I don't think there's going to be housing defaults. There's going to be default on the unsecure side of things. People are going to be affected financially there because that affects every Canadian that's, for the most part, that's over the age of 18. Because almost every Canadian over the age of 18 has some form of unsecured debt. Right. Whereas those with yep. secure, not everybody in Canada owns a piece of real estate. So are we going to see defaults climb? I don't think so. But I think that the people that will most be most impacted will be those that bought between 2020 and today. hundred percent. And those that don't own real estate at all. Right. <clears throat> for, for the four of us on this podcast, we're all fortunate, even though, Kurt, uh, Collins, you did just build a house. Um, you also came from a house that you you owned for years, so you're not you, you don't fall into that same category where we all four of us have enough equity that if we haven't touched it or done anything with it, we're still in good, comfortable positions financially. We don't have like we have fallbacks. It's those that went and refinanced to the max to do the pool or came into the, the market. Future. Yeah, right. Well, I think the problems are the people that have a, an initial mortgage and then they had to get a B lender for the second part of the mortgage, right? And now that secondary loan is going to default because they don't have enough money to make the payments on that because they're under variable for that. But then the bank's in first position. What happens there? The secondary can can force a, a power sale, right? The secondary has to buy out the first. Correct. Yeah. So you have not to buy out see, the first to be able that to force easy. power sale. It is a lot harder yeah. to Bondo's point. But what 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 concerns me is the trigger rate on these variables <laughs> when they qualified people on a stress test and the current variable rate with any kind of discount that was negotiated is still higher than whatever the stress test would have for. And some of the some of the well, not only not only that you're saying about it. <laughs> It's like, oh, oh no, I was just going to say, like, <laughs> the Canadian well, no, standoff. Just, eh? <laughs> well, I, I just think. I'm sorry. You go for it. I'm sorry. You're 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 sorry. sorry. No, sorry. You're, you're sorry. I'm, we're all sorry. Um, no, like, it, but like, if, if rookie, if we can keep the four, the panels, uh, okay. Well, we, yeah, that's better. Yeah, that we can kind of. Um, no, but just because it, it's, a, it's a group this is a group thing that kind of like grinds all of our gears. Right. And, and so like when you've got, for example, I had my um, personal trainer, he's doing an expansion on his house, right. In addition on this house walks in to said financial institution. He's talking to his branch manager hand to God. And this is going back three weeks ago. And he's like, yeah, so, um, uh, and I'm working out with another guy and, and, and he's like, yeah, yeah. So my, my, my bank manager said that rates are going to go down in December. And I go, what? He goes, yeah, they're going to go down. And I said, at, at a minimum, they're going to go up by 50 basis points. Like, that's what we all think. Like, you know, 25 at, at the very least, 25. Mortgage or Bank of Canada? Canada. Yeah, because the mortgage rates, are, mortgage rates are going to come, come down. The Bank of Canada is going up. Okay. No, I, he meant he, the way that it was said to him, the way that he related to me was yeah. overnight lending rates going to go down. And I went. No, it ain't. I go, it's going to go up by a minimum of 25 to 50 basis points in December. <laughs> Tim McKellum has already, has already stated that more pain's coming Tiff to Macklin. the economy. Tiff, sorry, Tiff Macklem yep. is, is, uh, is, has already stated that. So if the overnight lender rate goes up, then your fixed, your variable rates are going to go up. And which means also your bond rates are going to increase, which means your fixed pricing is also going to go up. So maybe the relative discount to the mortgage rates might go down or might yeah, get higher. That's Fine. What that's what he meant. But I go, I don't know where he's getting that information from. And so, this is kind of the BS that happens. Go ahead. If Try. I can speculate on that, there, there is some truth to fixed rates, most likely in December, will come down slightly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason being is leading up to a Bank of Canada announcement, you have all of these companies that are hedging on the increase. So ahead of time, they're now putting pricing and getting their rates up in an, an attempt to make more money off of you, the customer, because you're going to panic. 
you're going to lock in. And then once the Bank of Canada makes the announcement that they do, then we see the rates come down. And if you look at all seven rate, uh, seven that we had so far this year, yeah, all seven of them that we had, the fixed rates were up and then the fixed rates dipped a little. We haven't had any decreases in the overnight lending rate, right? So variable and adjustable rate mortgages have Stay remained same. unchanged, yep. but the fixed rate, we've, we've hit a plateau and then we've fallen off a little cliff each and every time. When we look at rates prior to October's meeting, rates were lower in October or, or the end of September, I should say, than they were in July when the Bank of Canada was rumored to be doing a point, a one point increase. We thought it was 50 to 75 beeps at the time, ended up being a full point. But because of that hedging, we did see uh, um, fixed rates lower in September than they were in July. So December 6th is going to be a big, big call when they finally come Seventh. out with that, right? Seventh? December 7th. And then uh, again, further rumors that the first meeting in January, which I believe is the 25th, 26th, 27th, somewhere. It's one of those three days. It's always a Wednesday, 10 a.m., six weeks apart, every meeting. Um, what would that be? That's December. Seven Wednesday. 25th. 25th. 25th will be see, the next see, the interesting Canada. part about this is it's routinely dead at this time of year anyways yeah, like, real estate. like from now basically till about middle january february the last three years the most insane part of the whole year was end of february march yeah <laughs> it was just like insane and that's at the, be the beginning of the pandemic the first year into the pandemic and kind of what we're calling the, you know, the ending or wrap up of the pandemic, which it's not wrapping up at all because we still got to go through Trudeau's spending like a drunken sailor, inflation causing. And China. Did you guys get that text? That thing Do you that see the you riots on? going on in China right now? Well, that's what yep. I sent you. You didn't read insane. the article? They're insane. They're protesting. Oh, yes. it's insane. Yes, they're showing it all on video too. Like they're, they're, they're whipping like guardrails at... And people in well, it's because they're it's watching. Oh, yeah. It's because they're watching the World Cup. They're saying they're watching the World Cup. They're seeing forty to fifty thousand people jammed into Qatar. Eighty, you know, into a, you know, uh, for the final, it's going to be eighty thousand. Yeah. No masks, no social distancing, and here is uh, the leader of China basically going, "Oh, we need to have COVID zero. It's just like the rest of the world's moved on from that. It's not happening. Well, and they're not paying them at the factory in the, the iPhone factory too. That's where the big riot started right now. They're not paying them at all. They can't leave their houses. They're well, working. Yep. Yeah. So they part of mind. they're losing their mind. Part of that article that Bondo sent had to do with what started it was a, a, a fire in a building where 10 people mm -hmm. died because of COVID zero. They weren't allowed to leave and escape to save themselves. And, and 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 the responders were delayed in getting there. Yes. It was a combination of all that that just started growing. And you've got colleges and universities around all provinces of China that this is how, yeah, people are just saying. Enough well, and they enough probably all have China. VPNs too, right? So they can get outside of China and find out what's going yep. on in the oh, rest yeah. of the world where they try to lock them down because it's communist rule there. So they you yes. can't use certain internet, but they can know how to get around it. Yep. So they're yeah. watching like football games on, on Thanksgiving where there's a hundred thousand people in Dallas, you know, like it's, it's insane. Like, could you imagine yeah. like, that's what they remember when we had uh, metabolic Cullen on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was said they were like four or five, six months ahead of us. Yes. Before they opened up. Right. So they, he was yeah. looking at us the way we're looking at <clears throat> China now. Right. And saying, yeah. Jesus. Oh, I got I got an email this morning from the Ontario Minister of Health and basically advising me to go get my uh, fourth fourth dose and and to get my flu shot and then also to wear a mask. And I'm like, uh, no to all three. I'm done. Um, yep. No, it's it's I've done what I can do. It's it's it. it we're, well, we're now the new on. things, the RSV, whatever's going around, they're saying. Yeah, yeah but that's sure we had it. I'm sure that's what you got. I've got it right now. I think that's what you had. Right, um, yeah, two weeks. Like it's going so, around. Like my brother in law has it now, and it, it it he's just getting better. Yeah, it's two to three weeks. It's absolutely garbage. It's but you oh, know, like, hey, but listen, that's it. It's a cough. But, so let, but, but let's be perfectly. State? But let's no. be perfectly clear, guys. 
we're not saying all of us here on this are, are, are vaccinated. So we're not, we're mm -hmm. saying, Hey, listen, if you are immunocompromised, you need to take the steps that you need to take to, to guard your own health and your own family's health. That's cool. But, and we don't want to hurt you. No, you know what so I mean? All so we're please saying take is the like, appropriate I, steps, right? But I, I can, I can assure you, um, that in, in, um, and I'm sure if we have Sarah on, all of our all of our opinions are going to change. Usually after that's what yeah. happens. She, that's it. We'll get shots together, of, Aggie. We're yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah. We all get shots together because <laughs> she'll call us a bunch of idiots, and then she'll be just like, "Go get your flu shots." We're like, "Okay, Sarah." Um, but we're looking at uh, it's true, uh, and um, we look at we look. That's why we're looking at China going like, "Okay, but COVID zero. Like, give me a break. Like, this is and 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 it's and it's." draconian rule there like this is not it's not and you you thought our lockdowns were bad it ain't close to that to china and you know the craziest part too is the the riots and and protests started on saturday and because like when you talk about your supreme leader the way they are right now you and call in for their resignation oh. you, you you run the risk of death yeah. <laughs> like it is bad and people still went out uh, again on Sunday. Well, they don't have a life right now. So what are they saving? They have no Correct. life. They're prisoners in their Correct. own country. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. intense for us because China wants to take over Taiwan again, right? So we talk about yeah. it a lot in our family, right? Yeah. And we're watching this. And, and my wife's father thinks it's a good idea for the communists to take over Taiwan. And we think it's, it's they think it's from nope. a business standpoint Jeff, and all that. Jeff, and Jeff, my wife is, Jeff. no, no, no. Jesus no, Jeff, no. put context to your comment. Not everyone knows that your wife is Taiwanese. They should. Can you put context? <laughs> context if they're Christ not sakes. a long-term <laughs> listener and viewer, they have yeah, to like just no. Everyone is coming a from. viewer, and they have our shirts and our mugs and our hats. Yeah. They all know. I'm gonna get a shirt that's sitting there. There, rookie new shirt. Jeff's wife is Taiwanese. Just get that. <laughs> says Jeff's wife is Taiwanese. Yeah, that's our new stuff right there. Jeff has a Taiwanese wife. We need that shirt. <laughs> Curry says Jeff has a Taiwanese wife. That's the oh, that'd be God. the number one selling shirt. We're not racist. We're not racist. No, just racist. have a shirt. Just have a shirt with Curry saying contacts, Jeff. Contacts. <laughs> with, with, uh, contacts. with the ears. <laughs> He's getting gray hairs when we speak. <laughs> It can oh, be okay. it can be Curry's hey. Bitmoji with air quotes. <laughs> yeah, context. Just, just going, eh. And we could have Trevor oh. with. <laughs> oh, oh yeah! Oh look, Jeff's look got this. Uh, <laughs> look at hey, hundred and twenty hey, bucks. It doesn't look too much different. Hi, uh, <laughs> nice metal handle. I paid for the whole trip. To I paid for the whole trip. Two pounds. So I got the cheaper saber. <laughs> Let's hear your sound, Jeff. Let's hear the sound yours makes. Listen to that. We got three of them at our house. <laughs> okay, not as good. Ready? And look, my blade even looks real. Yeah, it does. Right? From a dad standpoint, gentlemen, non-Star Wars geeks, 120 bucks. 250 bucks. You're paying for the whole trip? You have to be a fan. Years? You have to be a fan. <laughs> Look at any, even I can compact it and put it in my backpack. Oh. Me too. Oh. Look. There we go. I got the blade oh, out. Wow. Right yeah, favorite. but what are you doing with the blade? The blade's so long. Look at look at look how reduced. Context. I paid for this with my own money and the rest of the trip. I paid for this with my own money. And too. the rest of the trip. The flight. But look at how real the it is. Board, <laughs> the food. It looks real. It sounds real. Oh my god! But see, one Jeff that. bought it for his kids to probably nope. get his wife in bed. You nope. bought that for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> my and wife I didn't slept sleep with, with me for a week in after bed. I bought that. She thought I wasted money. I slept with this in my bed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> He literally slept with it. No, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> None of that. Okay. None of that. Uh, no, no. Okay. Let's be clear here. Uh, Does your heart stop here for Curry? 1230? 
I uh, wasn't. Yeah, we got ten minutes. Stop. It's, so it's we should the, all do uh, our wrap up then, I guess. For well, the- it's not our hard <laughs> stop. It's the restream has doing an update, and we don't want to run the risk of being on here when there's an update. Getting when there's out. good quality it's, content like this, who cares? We just like talking about light, lightsabers and lightsabers and, and sleeping with them. Hundred percent. Look, I even took a photo of myself in bed with a lightsaber. Nice. Wow. Excited. You look like you, you look had more, your, uh, your your vinegar strokes uh, face on there. I was going to say you look more like Wolverine in that picture. Well, it was the glow of the of the blade. That I R2 have a, I have that nice bright blue kyber crystal. Here's in another shirt for you, the rookie. Trevor Lindy says lightsabers are better than Viagra. They get more zing <laughs> in your thing. More zing uh, in your thing. Hundred better than zing. Viagra. Disney lightsabers. How about Lindy is a Jedi? I wish. <laughs> I wish. The force is strong with this one. That's right. Oh Jesus! I so <laughs> Avengers all the way. So, let, let, let's just, we just we'll <clears throat> rewind a little bit. I uh, you guys oh, are ridiculous. Is it now. Now, now, my, now my wife's now going to be yeah. in trouble. My wife's wife. We've got, got no trouble. listeners besides her wife. How much did you pay in. for those lightsabers? You told me ninety nine bucks, Jeff. That, that's that's what my wife said. What the hell are you buying that for? The kids don't even like it. I was like, they're getting one. So they both got one. My kids were so excited to go, and I did with Nate built the droid with me, and nice. Ali built the lightsaber with me. They were pumped, and Perfect. I got to do it. I got to do it. Here we go. We'll show the show the BB droid. They, they can never touch uh-huh. it again, though, eh? So it's no, hey, no, 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 no. They play with this. I let them play yeah. with this. It's it's remote controlled. It drives around. It makes some fun sounds. Do you, Two different do you, types of sounds. Do you drive it up to Katie when the kids are gone? Say, Katie, the kids are gone. In like a, a, a droid voice? No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like foreplay. It doesn't Go work. put your Princess Leia buns on. Yeah. <laughs> she totally has some, doesn't it? That was your one of your anniversary <laughs> gifts. It's like the Friends episode. Wow. When Ross dresses up with like Princess Leia. Wow. He's like, that, no, but that's a damn really? good idea. That's so a good back idea. Back to mortgages? <laughs> no. Yeah. We've gone. We've well, moved on to mortgages. Here. I think why don't All we do thing is the best part. Let what, next, what next time do we got? Because I want I want you to talk about trigger rates, right? And I don't yeah. know well, how let's, it's honestly tell what a trigger rate is. Uh, so I'll give a, a, a quick snapshot right now. Uh okay. 12, 45. 45. Okay. Okay. A quick snapshot of trigger rate. Can but we push to 12, we'll we'll add next podcast. Why don't we make a segment on trigger rate so we can get more into detail? Yeah, so what did they say right covered, now? I think right? they said twenty percent of mortgages right now are at the trigger rate, and they said another interest raise would be fifty percent. Yeah, so I think that's what so they're saying. Basically, in a nutshell, what a trigger rate is. It so first we need to clarify: trigger rates affect variable rate mortgages, not adjustable rate mortgages. So if you are an adjustable rate mortgage, and the bank, lender, credit union that you are with notifies you every time a rate increase happens and your payment changes you have an adjustable rate. So trigger rate doesn't affect you at all. A trigger rate is basically for, it's for variable rate mortgage products. So meaning your payment is static and the interest within it fluctuates. What happens is the trigger rate is when you're, there's no more money going towards principal. It's interest only. It's now exceeding that payment amount. And what's happening is it's actually causing your amortization to be extended beyond what you're currently at. So you're in a standstill then. That's a quick well, snapshot on it, but it is You're such going behind, in- Jeff. Yeah. You're because starting on to go a backwards. 25 year amortization, if you hit your trigger rate next year, you can owe 26 years on your mortgage. Correct. Yeah. So that's it in a nutshell, uh but definitely next episode if you guys are okay with it, we'll make it a more in-depth topic because to only have, and especially because yeah. I think that there's going to be some engagement with yeah. comments. The lightsabers won't be out. Yeah. Just the droid. I wonder, can I put the droid on my you computer? Should. Oh, you I should. can. Yeah. I can let the droid sit here on my computer with Perfect. me. It's like a little buddy. There we go. Perfect. But Amazing. trigger rate is really important, right? Because some people Huge. that are that are getting to that point are, are tacking on years to repay yep. this debt back off. Correct. And it I also shouldn't depends say years, on months, whatever it could be years, well, right? It, it also depends on when you got the, the variable yep. 
true variable, static payment, fluctuating interest, yep. payment, uh, mortgage in place. If you did a an adjustable rate, excuse me, a variable rate mortgage in 2021, then 100%, you're already backwards. You, yep. you, you already hit your trigger rate. You should have already looked at increasing. <laughs> uh, does your robot take your kids to school? I'm considering it right now. Now the daughter's <laughs> old enough. She walked herself to school this morning. Nate's homesick, uh, uh, but something I'll think about. I don't want to get the droid all scuffed up driving on the concrete. Anyways, um, <laughs> we will make it a more in-depth. You topic. seriously consider that, right? <laughs> Why not? I, so yeah, let, it definitely needs to be a more in-depth talk it, topic. Uh, one thing I'll note just for anybody watching or listening for this episode, uh, the 2023 Bank of Canada uh, dates are all set. They have been for uh, a couple of months now. Uh, keeping in mind, it's always a Wednesday. They're basically six weeks apart. Uh, it happens at 10 a.m. So the following eight meetings for 2023 are as follows. January 25th, March 8th, April 12th, June 7th, July 12th, September 6th, October 25th, and December 6th, 2023. We do have a December 7th meeting, which is the last one of 2022. And then the other thing I'll note is <laughs> January, April, July, and October are all monetary policy meetings. Question well. for you here on these on these uh, triggered mortgages. Yep. Are, are, when they when they have that, can they do anything to increase their payments so that they are paying part of principal still, or is that locked that's, in? That's the point. That's the point. But it's it's you need to know what your trigger rate is mm -hmm. in order to make that change. But right? could they, or are they locked in? Could they say, "Well, I want to add two hundred dollars more to no, my no, payment no. a they month"? Ab they absolutely want anybody in a true variable rate mortgage can absolutely increase their payment to protect themselves from this trigger rate or to, to almost all mortgages going backwards. Well, cause like I know my mortgage, when I had mine for Cabot street, I'd always pay down a lump sum every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in your payment case, privileges, right? That was an adjustable yeah. rate mortgage that you had there. Right. So if the bank of Canada changed your rate, cha your payment changed as well. If the rate changed. Okay. Right. But so that's what you had. So don't anyone that has it. the other mortgage will automatically, or is it depending on the wording? It depends. Be allowed on, to increase their payment. The yeah, every uh, almost mortgage, all mortgages can you can put some measure of additional funds without penalty. Correct. Yeah. The legal term, some measure of funds. Yeah, it's usually like, but isn't it usually like up to ten to fifteen percent of the the principal? It all depends, depends on, on the lender the institution. Yeah. Yep. Usually anywhere between ten to twenty percent. And in all honesty, there's some lenders that allow you to double up your mortgage payments. And some zero. Correct. And there's some that have prepayment privileges where it can only be once per year. Others, it doesn't matter. It can be 365 days a year. And then others have prepayment privileges that are restricted to a payment date. Now, so do you, you have any numbers on month? how many people have hit the trigger trigger number yet? I heard it was like 20% right now. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure. You know what? Again, like I said, it's such a, a more in-depth topic than what we're actually hitting on right now. So that why don't yeah, I'll yeah. do some yeah, research? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that our next one, when we go live in, in December, our middle of the month, December one, I guess we'll only do one in December, eh? Probably. But so, you have to listen to your professionals, people, right? You have to listen yes. to your professionals because you know what? You're going in and sitting down to your, with your mortgage broker. Your, bro your mortgage broker is telling you, is it adjustable? Is it variable? What are the implications? How much can I pay down without penalty? Your lawyer's also going to talk to you about what your prepayment options are without penalty. They're not usually going to uh, delve into the, the the type of product that you have. I mean, usually we'll make mention if it's a HELOC or something like that, or maybe a variable or an adjustable, but we'll, we're going to defer to the, the mortgage. But Listen, you've got to listen to your, your brokers when they're having these discussions with you at the onset. Pay right? attention. And, and pay well, attention. the scary part is there, because we talked about it on a previous episode, where it, remember we, the, so I, it probably mm -hmm. would have been like mid September ish, I think, might have been October, yeah. where there was a, one of Canada's big five, FI, had a, a, a mortgage professional selling a client on what they believed to be. A variable rate or a capped rate mortgage and in turn they actually put them into an adjustable rate mortgage 
payments were four hundred dollars a month higher. They weren't in a financial position to to cover that cost. They were in a very and the point being like this is a financial institute. This is an employee of a financial institution. The scary reality, and I'm not trying to tell people that they should be questioning everything, but when in that case, their the clients were dealing with their mortgage professional. Their mortgage professional told them one thing. They had a branch signing appointment. They were getting different information at the branch signing appointment. And their lawyer in turn reviewed things and said, hey, this isn't what you're getting. Well, no, 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 no. But the mortgage professional told us. So the point that I'm bringing up is if, you know, like when Bondo and I are working together on a file, we're on the same page. So the message I'm delivering to the client is the same message that he's delivering to the client regarding variable, adjustable, prepayment privileges, penalties, et cetera. But if you're going and dealing with somebody and the message isn't the same, question both of you the professionals. Be. Question the 100%. lawyer, question the mortgage. Figure it out. Get the clarification, right? And, and if you're not sure and you have a mortgage right now, you should be able to look at your mortgage commitment paperwork and it'll be outlined in that for you too, right? Hopefully you do have well, it. Well, the problem no. is though, adjustable rate mortgages do appear to be variable rate mortgages and variable rate mortgages do appear to be adjustable <clears throat> rate mortgages on their commitments. But they so that's when their when professional I, find out what it is to clarify. Right? When I'm meeting with a client, I always indicate anytime it's a variable or adjustable, it's a floating rate. I always say, look, it, it's one of these two. Confirm with your broker or your lender which yep. product you're in because it's going to have a net effect on the end back end result. It could have a net now, effect on the end result. Well, I mean, be so vague when you have it in there. Like, wouldn't that have to be outlined? Like. It is, but just some of the verbiage that they use within the contract is is very it, it varies from financial institution to financial institution. So it can be. Con I have read mortgage documents myself, um, my own, but that was totally fine. I mean, I've dealt with I've dealt with Trevor and Bondo, so it was totally fine. But um, you know, with uh, uh, other clients, and and I was confused. I didn't know which one they had, and a couple of times I've had to call Trevor and ask for clarification based on verbiage. <laughs> But, you know, like the class, and this is why I always use a mortgage broker, always, because they don't have any skin in the game, whether or not which financial institution you go to. They don't. They don't care because they get paid the same rate. And sometimes depending on the promotion or whatever, the, but depending on the financial institution, but they get paid from the financial institution for landing that mortgage. They don't care which one you go with. They don't care which rate you go with. They really don't. Um and this is why a huge well, they, they work for you, not for the bank, right? That's that's the right. They work for you, and you don't pay. Well, them that's what they should be doing. They, not all of them are uh, the great. No, but here's the, I, I got a the, quick I got a quick example. Uh, uh, again, another client that I tried to refer to Trevor. Uh, the husband just uh, you know knew everything, and decided not <laughs> to go with Trevor. You know which one I'm talking about, Trev, right? Um, and I think so. He, they, and he and he ended up going with the um, one of the big five. And uh, they had an existing relationship. Well, you know, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Blah, 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 blah. My, meanwhile, Trevor was just being honest. He was being straight up and honest. And the, the lady uh, at the time that they were dealing with at the bank basically said, listen, during it was a five-year um, adjustable rate mortgage. This will not go up, she said, this will not go up higher than 3% in the term of this mortgage. Okay, first of all, I, I, this is what absolutely pisses me off about the financial institutions and how they're federally regulated and how they get away with all this crap. Because if I said to somebody, notwithstanding GIC rates, where I'm allowed to quote a GIC rate because the GIC rate is fixed, locked. I'm legally not allowed to tell you I can't guarantee an interest rate. I can't guarantee anything. As a matter of fact, financial plans, according to FP Canada, we have to use – a conservative rate of 4% um, at, for, for any assets and 3% for any like housing or any commercial assets. Like it, it and they, we've, we've had questions on it and we're like, I'm sorry, but our license well, is way more important than, yeah, we're going conservative. Yep. We'll, we'll try to break the plan yep. is what we want to do. Yep. So sure enough, <clears throat> six months ago, uh, the, a girlfriend of Kristen's, like that's how, that's the relationship. Um, turned around and she's like, right. I know exactly yeah. who the client is now. <laughs> and uh, turned around and she's like, we're so pissed because we're now at four and a half percent. And we were told, bah, 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 bah. and we usually this, that, and the other thing. And they went to go follow up. So where is she? 
Well, one of three things happened at the bank. Either you're good and you get promoted, either you're bad and you get fired, or you retire. And this person retired. And so <laughs> she just washed her hands away and she's gone. There's no recourse what they can do whatsoever. And they're stuck paying these higher interest rates. So when the mortgage rates go up again in December, their interest rates going to go up again. See, that's the problem in our industry is, and this is true, the truth hurts, mm-hmm. but the truth is crucial. And the problem in our industry, if you give someone the truth, they're not getting sugarcoated. So they'll find another professional who gives them something that's not the truth. Yeah. And they feel like that's the reality I want to live. So I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. But when the truth comes back up and you're like, oh, shit, that guy who told me from the you beginning mean, that I didn't want to hear that, that was important. Boom. You mean kind it's of hard like because I know I need to have $4 million of insurance all the time and all that. I get it. I get it. I got to buy, I got to buy lightsabers and Harry Potter wands and foosball tables. You want to hear a story about lightsabers? I'm sorry. It came up. So I got it. I got a new shirt quick though. Trevor with his lightsaber is droid. And it says celibacy is out of this world. Uh, What do you think? (laughs) I'll take it. And the lightsaber. I'll with the that. lightsaber and the it's droid like, on it. I absolutely. love celibacy. Um, so there, Allie and I are waiting to go in for our appointment. And doesn't a family <laughs> of six come out, all with lightsabers? Three, three greens, two blues, and a purple blade. $1,600 US for six no lightsabers. Eh? 1600 One family. Was Graham on the back? They didn't get a deal for getting for the, six of them. The stuff? No, they they were there. They were posing with their lightsabers. I watched them hand their cell phone to to an individual that just came out as well. Would you mind taking a photo of us? And they all crossed swords. <laughs> six sixteen hundred and two dollars with tax for six of them. All right. Well, this is a good time to end. Um, so we got some Bondo, good shirt ideas want... today, though. Hey, we got great shirt, shirt ideas. Yeah. Great. Bondo, Another good shirt, you. Jeff. You need more insurance. Yes. Right. <laughs> so just, just be a picture of my wife, like driving a, a a Lincoln Navigator to a beach with like a fur coat on and like so much drip with diamonds and all that, and saying, "I I, and then I just... listen to Brandon Curry." <laughs> Hashtag and then just your tombstone, eh? Jeff. Just your tombstone on the back. Yeah, and just like a, no, just like a little, just like a little urn that's like beside the TV, right? <laughs> beside the 150 inch TV. <laughs> Hashtag is right need there. more insurance. Yeah. Back of the shirt is Jill holding the smoking gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'd be good. <laughs> no, like a little box of arsenic for my, my food that she makes. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Sig All right. Lich, Brand Boulevard. Thanks, Brand Greatly Boulevard. Greatly appreciated for the sponsorship. <laughs> help us help you stay informed. Bye. Bye.